Extra, extra. Read all about it, cries a newspaper salesman from his kiosk. To call him a newsboy would not be accurate. The poor man hasn't been a boy, physically anyway, for many decades. Needless to say, he stops barking when he sees a car float down from a nearby roof and land in a parking spot on the street alongside the curb. Fowl exits the vehicle and inspects the street with the tapping of his foot. Solid asphalt, I guess. Real enough, then. Fowl cuts the car's ignition. He then notices that the newspaper man has stopped his barking and is gazing at him. Oh, great. He's gobsmacked, Fowl thinks, as he approaches the man. It's all right, friend, Fowl says, tapping his hand on the stack of newspapers next to the man. Eh? The man asks, coming out of his momentary trance-like state. The car, Fowl says, gesturing to it. She's a foreign model, a prototype. Ah, you don't say, the man manages to say, nodding and trying to get back to his crying, but his eyes remain fixed on the bizarre machine before him. Fowl glances down at the front page, the headline matching verbatim what the man returns to, yelling out to the few passers-by at this time of night. One woman stops briefly to also give Fowl's car a visual inspection before growing bored with it and continuing on her way. The time of day, Fowl guesses, must be mid-evening and he wonders why there aren't many passers-by on the street. Must be dinner time, Fowl muses, or but his thoughts are distracted by the man's loud voice. Espionage-related trial, a sensation. Accusations of spying rock Washington, the man cries, then turns and asks Fowl, paper, mister, the sudden change in the man's volume, along with the question, shocks Fowl so much that he unconsciously starts to oblige the man, catching his hand absent-mindedly reaching for the wallet in his jacket's inner pocket. Senses returning, Fall realizes he ought to just fish some coins from his pants pocket. He does so, paying the man a nickel and taking his paper. Then, the sight of a hot dog vendor catches Fall's eye, and he strolls over, the paper crooked under one arm, his sole purpose to get a lay of the land and check to see how real this place really is. Watch your step, mister, the hot dog vendor warns as Fall approaches. The man gestures toward the ground with his tongs. Pardon, Paul asks, looking down. He then sees a pothole near the vendor's cart and notices he nearly stepped in a puddle of water. Oh, thanks, Paul says, sidestepping the hazard. Wouldn't want to ruin your good shoes, the man offers with a genuine smile. Right, you know, pal, a guy can even drown in a teaspoon of water. Give me a dog with everything on it, please. Sure thing, that's so, huh? A teaspoon of water? That's right, it's the little things that can ruin the whole thing before it's even begun. Like a pebble in your shoe, a fly in your soup, or hell, even a nine volt battery can do a fellow in if you set things up just right or something. Just don't put your tongue on one. A nine volt what? The man asks as, as he hands Fall his hot dog and collects his payment. It's the minutia you gotta keep your eyes on, that's all I'm saying. Thanks for the dog. Paul says, taking a bite and walking away. Perfect snack for those middle-of-the-night munchies, Paul thinks, as he strolls along, his mouth analyzing the texture and taste of the hot dog, while his feet and eyes take in the dream that lies before him. I tell you what, Teddy, I sure wish I could share this with you, Paul says, under his breath. I'm amazed by the detail of old Bliss's resonance field here. It doesn't just seem real, Teddy. It is real, down to the taste of this hot dog I'm eating. The newspaper crooked under my arm, and the 1940s money I've used to pay for both. Arriving back at the newspaper man, Fall keeps eating his hot dog as he lays out the newspaper on the hood of his car. Hmm. Dim City Times, Fall says quietly to himself while chewing. Dim City, huh? Well, that seems about appropriate. A bit on the nose, if you ask me. Guess you're only as clever as the bliss dreamer. Dreaming the dream, eh? You say something, pal? The newspaper man asks, without looking over at Fall, 
The man seems interested in adjusting some umbrella-like apparatus above his stack of papers. Ah, uh, nothing, pal, Fall replies, using the same term as the man. It's just that, according to this, you poor saps know this place as Dim City. Fowl looks over at the guy, but can tell by the man's body language that he is not in the mood for conversation, which suits Fowl just fine. Fowl goes back to skimming his paper, this time talking even lower under his breath. Looks like lots of tenements, sky-high, nasty, bleak, just dreadful. Though I'm afraid our cities have got you beat, friend. Yes, sir, Bob, sky high and as dour as dour can be. Just sad, natureless future. That's what we got for you, that's for sure. And just think if it weren't for. Hold on, Teddy, what do we have here? Fall has caught a break. He's gone lucky and now spies something on one of the interior sections as he scans the paper, putting the last bite in his mouth and looking about as if half expecting applause or recognition for this eureka moment. He finds only the newspaper man arranging his papers and again calling out the daily news. Fall turns his gaze back to the image before him on the printed page. My goodness, Teddy, there she is in all her glory, he says, tapping the page with the hot dog wrapper. Her body proportions are different. There's no wings and that hairstyle is all wrong, but I'd know that face anywhere. Nininshu. The legend below the picture has two names, neither of which is Ninenshu. Indeed, there are two women in the photo, so they must line up with the two names in the legend. Both ladies are dressed to the nines and look like they're standing on a stage, perhaps singing. Fall then tries to glean tidbits from the column attached to the image. Okay, one is Rochelle Chalmette and the other is Carmel Loz. If the order of the names matches the two ladies pictured, which doesn't always happen, Teddy, then the girl matching Ninenshu is known in this town as Miss Carmel Luz. Apparently, the Rochelle chick is a big deal. Some French jazz blues singer who's been in America since the war, Teddy. She's recently taken on a protege, the other chick. Our chick. But she's going by Carmel Luz. So, Ninenshu is new joining Miss Rochelle Chalmet as a nightclub singer at a nightclub called The Swan Song. Fall straightens up from the hood of the car and folds the newspaper back up into its original condition. Brilliant. Now, I just need to find this place, this Swan Song. A taxi cab then pulls in front of Fall's car and stops next to the newspaper seller. High beams casting everything in silhouette and highlighting the misty drops of rain leisurely floating down here and there. Did someone call me a cab? Fowl murmurs into the mist, tipping his hat down to block the harsh beams, reminding himself of the seriousness of the situation, and that in this kind of place, even the shadows have ears. <laughs>